Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So it's that time of year again when Netflix is dropping a lot of spooky content to drive up engagement uh, before Halloween season is over. One of these is a movie called There's Someone Inside Your House, based off of the novel by popular YA novelist Stephanie Perkins, directed by Patrick Bryce, the guy who directed and wrote Creep, and the screenplay was written by Henry Gayden, the guy who wrote Shazam. So, it should be good, right? I mean, on paper, the idea sounds good. The movie comes across as a mixture of the Fear Street movies, 13 Reasons Why, and Scream, but I think the idea never really lives up to the potential, especially with this direction. The gist of this movie is that high school students are being targeted and murdered by a serial killer due to their past actions that they've committed. The killer wears masks of their face that have been 3D printed when he's killing them and then subsequently reveals their secret to the people of the town. This has the protagonist Makina Young who is newish in town worried that she'll be next as she harbors her own secret and one she thought she could outrun by moving to this new town and changing her last name. So. This movie is a lot of things. It's a slasher. It's a whodunit mystery. It's a teenage coming of age angsty movie that also tries to be a social commentary with a message that appears to be about, hey, don't over punish people for their past. But the movie doesn't really seem to know how to juggle all of these themes or which one it wants to focus on. It also really wants you to think that it's smarter than it actually really is. So whenever there was an attempt at humor, I wasn't really sure if it was a genuine moment or if it was trying to be this self-aware satire. The filmmakers also heavily rely on the movie's twist of who stunned it by using red herrings to throw you off guard until the reveal. Oh, it could be this bad boy wearing a leather jacket, or it could be this Uber driver who seems to be everywhere around these kids. Instead, it's this person who Makina and her friends had rapport with. Aren't the filmmakers so clever? And we're left with a convoluted, forgettable monologue trying to explain or justify the killer's motives. But I don't, if you look back at the movie, it doesn't really make sense and instead the earlier kills actually hinders the kill that the killer wants to do at the end. The filmmakers seem to be aware of the tropes that come with these types of horror movies but they don't do enough to really go beyond them or divert them. They instead settle for just being cliche and superficial. Sure, there were some aspects of the movie that I liked, but they still had some issues. I liked the party scene where Monika's friend group is talking about their secrets and just having a good time. I suspect this was a scene from the book, because although it was a really good moment within the narrative of the film, there really wasn't a build up towards it. I wish their friendship, which relatively speaking is the best part of the movie had been developed sooner or shown more of. Instead, these moments just feel empty as the movie chooses to describe these people's characteristics instead of just showing them or portraying them in any meaningful way. I think that's how I'd sum up the movie as underdeveloped, relying on shocks and twists to tell a story. It's not complete trash, but it's a mad Netflix product that just disappointed me. It wasn't up to my standards, or at least the standards that I have for good horror and a good Netflix original movie, and so I'd give this a 1 out of 5. So there you have it, that was my review of There's Someone Inside Your House. If you guys made it this far and enjoyed my review, please subscribe and uh, I'll see you all next time.